Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to explain about the extendable hashing. Extendable hashing is a dynamic hashing. So far I have explained all this was the uh, static hashing. This is the dynamic hashing. And uh, uh, dynamic hashing it means that we can uh, store the element whenever the requirement came. Our name is saying that extendable means we can extend our bucket whenever the requirement come. Now we'll see that what is the extendable hashing. Extendable hashing is the dynamic method where the directory and buckets are used. Here directory and buckets are used. In directory, directory will store the ID, unique ID or we can say that the pointer and directory is pointing to the bucket and in bucket we can store the elements. Now in this method, the bucket grow and shrink as the record increases or decreases. It means that the, if the number of element is increased, the bucket will grow and shrink according to the requirement. This method is called extendable hashing. This method is called extendable hashing. Now we'll see the components of the extendable hashing. What are the component of the extendable hashing? So, the component of the extendable hashing is directory, bucket, global depth, local depth, bucket splitting and directory expansion. Now we'll see one by one what is directory. So if you see that the, this diagram, this is called directory, this is called directory, this is bucket, this is local depth and this is global depth. So if you observe that global depth is pointing to the directory and local depth is pointing to the bucket. Now we'll see that the container store pointer, the directory is a container that store the pointer to the bucket. So buckets pointer is stored in a directory. Each directory given a unique ID. Each directory is having a unique ID which may change. This unique ID may change and when it will change? When the expansion take place. When the expansion take place, it will going to change. Then what it is saying that the hash function returns directory ID using that you can store the element in the bucket. So previously what you were getting using hash function, you were getting the index. Here you will get the directory ID. Directory ID you will get that and using that ID you can store your element in the bucket. Now what it is saying that what is the size of the directory or you can say that number of directory that is 2 to the power global depth. Suppose you have a global depth is 1 so number of directory is 2. If it is global depth is 2, so number of directory is 4. So this is see if the global depth is 1, number of directory is 2 and if it is global depth is 2, so number of directory is 4. Now the bucket. Next is bucket. Bucket is store the hash key. You can say that the bucket is store the elements and directory point to the bucket. Directory is pointed to the bucket. See 0 id directory id is pointing to the zeroth bucket and one directory uh, pointing to the one bucket see what's saying that the bucket may contains more than one pointer yes this is also possible that the single bucket point to the mul multiple pointers so here you can see that two pointer zero one directory id or one one directory id is pointing to the single bucket that two directory ids is pointing to the single bucket and here it's saying that if it is the local, local depth is uh, less than global depth. If your local depth is less than global depth, then only it can point more than pointer. Look at that, the global depth is 2 and local depth is 1. So local depth is less than, less than global depth. So single bucket is pointing to pointer. Next is saying that the global depth. What is global depth? Global depth is associated with directory. Global depth is associated with directory and denote the number of bit that are used to hash function to, character, uh, to categorize the key. It means that what is the global depth? Suppose you have a global depth is 1. Suppose you have a global depth is 1 and you want to store key is 4. Suppose you want to store the key is 4 and you convert the key into binary bit then you will get that 100 right and your global depth is 1. So you check that the one 
lsv one last bit you check that and accordingly you will store this phone in which in that bucket so here you have a bt 0 and 1 two directory you have given 0 and 1 and you want to store the 4 if you convert that 4 in a binary you will get that 100 0. and check that one last digit why so one why i'm saying that one why not two why not three because you have a global depth is one so you just check that last one bit so your last one bit is zero so you are going to store four in the zeroth directory so you are going to store four in the zero directory Similar like that, if you want to store the 6, if you convert in the binary bit, you will get that 1, 0, uh, sorry, 1, 1, 0. So, it's, its last digit is also 0. So, 6 is also going to store in this bucket. So, what you are doing that? While storing the element, you will see the global depth also. What is the uh, value of the global depth? If it is 2, then you will check the 2 last digit, 2 LSB. If it is 1, you check 1 LSB. If it is 3, you will check 3 LSB. LSV. So same thing here saying that they denote the number of bit which are used by the hash function which are used by the hash function to categorize the key to categorize the key and global depth equal to number of bit in a directory ID. So here you have a global depth is 1. So how many bit in a directory ID? Single bit. Here the global depth is 2. So how many bit in a directory ID? 2 bit. Next is that local depth. What is local depth? Local depth is associated with bucket. Local depth is associated with bucket. So look at that. This is the local depth. This is the local depth. This is the local depth. Now, now what it is saying that the local depth, depth is accordance with the global depth is used to decide the action to be performed in the case of overflow occur so i will explain this uh, overflow concept in the next slide while explaining about the algorithm just here learn uh, just here remember that the local depth is accordance with the global depth is used to decide the action to be performed local depth is always less than and equal to local depth always be less than and equal to it will be not going to greater than Next, if they are saying that bucket is splitting, what, what is bucket is splitting? Why we perform the bucket is splitting? Because you know that the extendable hashing is the dynamic hashing. Extendable hashing is the dynamic hashing. Then what we will do if the overflow occur, if the bucket size is given 3 and if we get that 4 element, then we'll perform, uh, then overflow occur. If overflow occur, then we'll split the bucket into two parts. Then we perform the splitting here. Next is saying that the directory expansion. When we perform the directory expansion, if the local depth is less than local depth is less than uh, sorry equal to global depth. If local depth if local depth uh, local depth is this one and global is this one. If it is both is equal and then overflow occur, then you perform the bucket split as well as directory expansion. If it is global depth and local depth is equal and overflow occur, then we will perform the split of bucket as well as directory expansion. And third is also what will you do? We will increment the glo global depth, depth as well as local depth of only overflowed bucket. Suppose overflow come here. Suppose overflow come here. Then we will split this bucket into two part will display it into two part as well as will split it into two part as well as expand the directory and will increase the global depth as well as local depth so previously it was two now it become three and this is also become three now we'll see that algorithm of the extendable hashing uh, of performing the insertion in the uh, bucket of element so what are the procedure we will do while performing the insertion element in the bucket? So there is a uh, total 8 step is here. In first step what it is saying that first analyze the element. What type of element it is. It's a string or character or integer or uh, float value. What type of it is. So it's saying that first step just analyze what type of the element you have. It means that why we are saying that analyze it. Because if it is you are getting a string. Suppose your element is 
string then what will you do first you have to convert a string into integer because you cannot calculate the pointer value or uh, index value using the string so first you have to take the strings ascii value using the ascii value you calculate the convert it into the string into the integer then after first step you analyze the data analyze the element next step you have to convert into the binary format standard wall hashing is working on the binary bit because working on the bit because of that reason you have to first step analyze the element second step convert into the binary format and what will you do if it is a string then you have to convert in the ascii value third step is saying that check the global depth of a directory what is the global depth of the directory and suppose the global depth of directory is 2 suppose the global depth of directory is 2 then what will you do identify the directory first identify first check the global depth then identify the directory <coughs> directory in that global depth number of uh, sorry global depth is 2 if it is global depth is 2 then your directory will also contain 2 bit then what will you do while inserting the element you check the last 2 bit last 2 bit you check it accordingly you go and check your directory suppose this is my directory and my global depth is 2 and suppose uh, this element i want to store this element is nothing but a 49 if you want to store this 49 what is the last 2 bit because my global depth is 2 so i will check the last 2 bit last 2 bit is 01 so go and check that what is the last bit 01 so my second directory is containing 01 so check that where this second directory is pointing in which uh, sorry second right directory is pointing to which bucket so if you see that this bucket is pointing so 49 is going to store here 49 is going to store in this bucket right next is saying that the navigation navigation it means that same thing first check the global depth and check that which uh, directory id is pointing to the which bucket and then you navigate that then sixth step is saying that after the insertion check that it's a uh, it's a it, it is overflow or what so look at that your bucket size was 3 and you stored 49 then check that it's following overflow yes this is the overflow then what will you do then come to the seventh step if overflow occur if overflow condition come then follow this two step this follow two step first step is saying that if the globe local depth of overflowing bucket so overflowed occur in which bucket this bucket 0 to 1 01 directory and 11 directory is pointing to that bucket so either check that this bucket so where the overflow is occur in this bucket overflow occur so if and what is the local depth of this one this is 1 and what is the overflow of, sorry global depth of directory is 2 uh, sorry uh, global depth is 2 so here saying that if the local depth of overflowing bucket overflowing bucket is this one what is the local local depth 1 equal to global depth is it equal to 2 so global depth is 2 and local depth is 1 is it equal to no it's not equal to so come to the case 2 so here saying that in the case of local depth in this case local depth is less than global depth if it is less than look at that local depth is less than global depth then what will you do only split the bucket into two part only split the bucket if it is equal if it is equal then perform the directory expansion as well as bucket split both thing you thing you do if it is equal then you perform directory expansion and bucket split then you do that uh, directory expansion or bucket split if it is less than if it is less than what will you do if it is less than you will do that only bucket split you will only do the bucket split and then what will you do increment the global depth sorry if it is less than only increment the local depth only increment the local depth and only split if it is equal to then you uh, you increment the global depth as well as uh, uh, local depth and also perform directory expansion and bucket split do remember this is very much important if overflow occur then check that local depth of overflowing bucket equal to global depth if it is equal then perform directory expansion as well as bucket split and increment the global depth and local depth three thing you have to do directory expansion 
bucket is split and increment global depth as well as local depth by one if it is equal if it is less than if it is local depth of overflowing bucket less than global depth then perform two thing one is that bucket is split second one is that increment local depth of bucket local depth of overflowing bucket afterward what will you do in the eighth step rehashing the splitted bucket you will not going to rehash for all the element only rehash the splitted bucket element so whatever the element in that overflowed bucket you just divide it into two part now again insert all these element check that the lsv bit i accordingly have to store in the uh, store the element in that two bucket splitted bucket so these are the step you are going to perform while doing the insertion of element in the bucket uh, so, uh, yeah in the bucket so can it will help you out to search your element in a constant time in a constant time because hashing is taking constant time for searching a element so do remember all these steps analyze the data elements is it integer or string convert in the binary format third check the global depth fourth identify the directory which directory will you going to store the element fifth one is that if you identify the directory and bucket then you simply store the element after storing you check that is it overflow occur or not if it is overflow occur check the two case G uh, ld of the local depth of the uh, overflowed bucket equal to or uh, global depth or if it is less than if it is equal to perform directory expansion bucket split and increment uh, local depth global depth if it is less than only bucket split and increment ld and third you perform rehashing of the splitted bucket element that's all so this is the algorithm of the uh, extendable hashing now i'll explain about the advantage and disadvantage of the extendable hashing so advantage of the uh, extendable hashing is that in this method the performance does not decrease performance does not decrease because you are not going to do again everything you are not performing rehashing to every element right so this is not going to decrease the performance and data grows in the system it simply increase the size of the memory to accommodate the data in this method memory is well utilized here you are using all this memory you are not wasting the memory so best best part of this method is that you are saving the space you are saving your memory you are utilizing your all memory so there is not there is not unused memory is lying in your hashing <clears throat> this method is good for the dynamic database this is this is good for the dynamic database and you where you can grow and shrink frequently this advantage is what this is the good advantage you have seen that saving the space here uh, bucket is grows and shrink according to the requirement now see the disadvantage of the hashing disadvantage of this hashing is that if the data size increase if the data size increase the bucket size is also increase if the data size increase the bucket size is also increase and this address of the data will maintain in the bucket address table and this is because the data address keep changing as a bucket grows and shrink if there is a huge increase in data if it is a huge increase in the data the maintaining the bucket address that become the tedious that was the problem with the standable hashing so you are saying that if the huge increase in the data the maintaining of the bucket address table become the problem this was the disadvantage of the standable hashing in this case the bucket overflow situation also occur will occur but it might be take little time to reach this situation that's a, that than the extend uh, sorry starting hashing right so there is a two problem with that standable hashing Thank you for watching my video. I will explain in the next video about uh, about the example. I'll explain uh, extendable hashing with example. That's all about the uh, extendable hashing. Thank you for watching my video.